Hello to all YouTube users. I am 22 Tiger Dude, and I am making my first ever video to ever be posted on YouTube. A few of you already know by now what my real name is, but for the most part, a lot of you really don't know, so you guys are about to find out in 3, 2, 1... There's my delicious birthday cake. Happy birthday, Tony. All right. I reached to 111 points. So what does that tell you? I'm addicted to Flappy Birds. Um, it sucks that's, got, that's taken down from the App Store by now. But at least I still have the game. I'm still addicted to the game. Hey, everyone. It's Twain's Tiger to here. As you can see, it is really snowy. It's rare for there to be snow. Uh, welcome to my... DVD Blu-ray update. Um, there's no way I'm gonna do one outside, so let me go inside and get comfy. The scene where Gene Kelly is singing, singing in the rain. That is just honestly one of the most beautiful scenes ever put into film. It's honestly one of the greatest movie scenes of all time, in my opinion. All the five and evaporated milk. <sighs> Cinnamon, extract vanilla, oh my god, rice flour, oh my god, sugar. Wow, all that. mind blown, mind blown. Wow. And water gives you life. But you know what else gives you life? Uncle Drew! SpongeBob's big. Birthday blowout! Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I am here to review Sonic the Hedgehog. And yes, I just got this guy finally recently. And don't forget, I bring my spookiness and... Talk power! Hey, what's up there, everybody? This is Tony, aka 22 Tiger Dude here, and welcome to my 22 question QA. Thank you all so much for the questions. Of course, the whole point of this being a 22 question QA is that my channel name is 22 Tiger Dude. You know, 22 happens to be my favorite number, and we're in the year 2022 and my 10th anniversary happens to land on 2022 so i figured you know what it could be fun to get 22 questions i did get more than 22 questions but for those wondering don't worry your questions that i will not answer in this video i will answer in a bonus q a so please do not be disappointed if the question you were anticipating me to answer does not make it into this video. So I did have to like really handpick the questions to those that did comment me multiple questions. Those are the comments I did have to handpick them. But I definitely hope you all have fun with this as it is supposed to be a celebration of me having this channel for 10 years and just a way to just celebrate with all of you i want to keep this q a not only fun but i do want to be honest with some of the questions that i did receive here so i hope that i definitely deliver so <sighs> my tiger power it is getting stronger and stronger and <sighs> let's do this some of these questions I had to combine into one because some of you would ask me the same questions so because of that I did have to kind of combine them into one question so when it comes to my first question right here I got more than one question involving my movie reviews involving my SpongeBob review it relates to either will there be more or when's my next one going to be. I am just going to be straight up honest with all of you right here. But 
you know, my days of me pumping out movie reviews and SpongeBob reviews, um, they're definitely pretty much behind me. That's not to say I'm never going to do a video movie review ever again or a SpongeBob review ever again, but I'm definitely not going to pump them out like I used to. My 2007 days, that's when I think the start of me getting burnt out was happening. Like, I definitely pumped out quite a bit of movie reviews in that year, but 2017, I did notice that was kind of the start where I was getting a little burnt out. There were still certain movies I never reviewed from that year uh, because of me getting burnt out, like Dunkirk. I remember how I wanted to try to get motivated to do my video review for Dunkirk and I just never did. Well, those were the days where I just really needed to have a lot of distraction in my life. I'm at a place now in my life where I'm honestly okay just slowing down. I honestly do love being able to just focus more on like watching movies for example or just feel a lot more relaxed just spending time with my family or my friends because I'll be honest with y'all as much as I do love doing those videos from back then because I was so in love with doing my movie reviews and my Splendor reviews, it kind of did take away a little bit from, you know, my family time and all that because as much as I love being with my family, I was just thinking about how, oh, I want, I have to get home to do this review and this review. And I, I couldn't really relax in a way because of that. I always had to feel so stressed to pump out a movie review and a Splendor review. And to be honest with y'all, I'm just at a point where I just feel a lot more relaxed because at least when I'm spending time with family or I'm doing other things, I don't have to feel so stressed and pressured to just pump out a movie review or a Splendor review as soon as possible. Also, ever since, you know, the pandemic started, it has helped me watch more movies. Like, I've seeked out, I'm not kidding when I say twice as more movies compared to the pre pandemic days but as far as like when my next movie review will be or when my next one review will be i'm not sure um at this point it's just a matter of when i feel like doing that um so i can't quite answer that as far as the sponge reviews goes i'm really really sorry to all of you because i know you all want to know my thoughts on the spongebob episodes there have been times where I'm trying to push myself to even do a Spongebob review and I just have such a hard time. And it's not because I'm not a fan of the show. I am still a massive Spongebob fan and I still do watch the new episodes whenever I have a chance to. But yeah, I'm just similar to movie reviews to be honest. I'm just not feeling that motivation. I just really need to feel to get my gas going and I'm just so sorry about that. So... I guess regarding the Spongebob reviews, I know understandably so, uh, so y'all still want to know my thoughts on Spongebob, so maybe to those that want to get Spongebob content in some sort of way from me, maybe you could give me suggestions, would you like me to maybe do written reviews on my Facebook page, or quick thoughts on Twitter, or I know YouTube does those shorts, they have those like quick little shorts like in the span of like a med or something now. Um, would you like me to do like Spongebob episode reviews in like the shorts style possibly? Whatever suggestions you may have regarding the Spongebob reviews, you can let me know. I hope that's the best answer I can give you all. I really want to make sure I went in great detail when it came to this question. And it was my first question for this Q&A too because I figured, okay, I might as well get, honestly, the most important question out of the way. No matter what, I'm still going to treasure and value the days when I was very consistent with those videos because those were definitely such great times right there. Question number two. 
Did you know this year is the year of the tiger in the Chinese zodiac? I did a while back actually, I'd say maybe about a few months ago, is when I just found out about this information. And I think that's really cool. I was not expecting 2022 to be the year of the tiger in Chinese zodiac, but I think that's absolutely incredible. It's supposed to be, for what I understand, a lucky year for tigers. So hey, let's go. Question number three. Did you enjoy Thor Love and Thunder? Are you excited for She-Hulk? Yeah, so Thor Love and Thunder. I know it's a movie that has been very mixed. Reception has been all over the place with that movie. There's people that really enjoy it. There's people that were very indifferent mixed towards it and then there are, there are those that really hate it some that even say it's the worst in the entire mcu and so where do i fall on it i actually enjoy the movie i actually do think there's a lot of really good things about it thor ragnarok is still my personal favorite in the thor franchise for sure but i do enjoy thor love and thunder i did think most of the comedy, not every comedic bit, but most of the comedic bit did work for me. I did enjoy how they handled Thor and Jane's dynamic, and their dynamic is definitely far and beyond the best in the entire franchise. Um, I did enjoy seeing Natalie Portman come back into this franchise. I thought she portrayed Jane very well. Chris Hemsworth always kills it as Thor. Um, obviously, I really love seeing Tessa Thompson as King Valkyrie, uh, Korg. Um, even if not everything he says hits in the movie, he's still a really delightful character. And even though I would have liked more of Christian Bale as Gore, I did still really like him a lot. I thought he definitely killed it when it comes to his performance. And, you know, without any spoilers, the dramatic moments in the movie, especially when you get towards the end, I thought they were executed very, very well. You know, it does have its flaws. Like I will say the Russell Crowe bit, that was definitely where the humor was falling the most flat for me. Um, even though I could tell Russell Crowe was having fun, just yeah, that entire bit was not exactly landing for me. And I do agree with people that I do think the humor can kind of overtake the dramatic elements a little bit and maybe Taika Waititi could have toned down. but. Overall, it's not enough for me to dislike the film. There's a lot I still like about the movie. And yeah, I did really enjoy it. And as far as She-Hulk goes, um, to be honest, I'm not really excited for it. I'll admit, the recent trailer that they dropped, um, you know, at Comic-Con, it was definitely a better trailer than the last trailer. Way better. I'll definitely give it that credit. But, uh, like, look, I'm obviously going to watch it because... It's the MCU, but a lot of these Disney Plus shows, in my opinion, they're just not cutting it for me. You know, it's the MCU. I enjoy a majority of the stuff they do, but, like, these shows, they need to, like, step up with their quality. I'm not asking for these shows to be one of the greatest things ever, but I do just want something that's at least good entertaining something for me to get invested in and to be honest with you i've only enjoyed one division and hawkeye that's it i really have not enjoyed the others loki which i know is a favorite for most it's actually my least favorite out of the disney plus mcu shows which is Obviously not saying a lot because I don't really like most of them, but Loki, that's actually my least favorite of the ones that I don't really like. So I hope She-Hulk can maybe be the third one to hit for me in the MCU Disney Plus shows. We'll see. Um, but no, I'm not really looking forward to it. If it does surprise me, that's awesome. Question four, do you like the original Avengers movie? Yeah, I do. I do like the original Avengers movie a lot, actually. I really just enjoy the dynamic with the characters. There's a lot of very funny moments that go on with it. It may drag a little bit in the middle. I do always feel the runtime a little bit in the middle-ish portion each time I watch it. But, like, that doesn't take away from how much I enjoy the movie. And the cinematography, it is kind of like your 
TV quality. Definitely not as cinematic, especially once you compare it to Age of Ultron and so on. Uh, so cinematography wise, I do wish it had more of a theatrical feel to it, but I do enjoy the movie a lot to be honest. It's still really well crafted, it's really well written, and it is still one of the most memorable theater experiences, definitely like hands down. I mean, I saw the Avengers three times in theaters, and that normally doesn't happen too often just because so many movies come out that I can never really go like three times. If I'm even lucky, I can see a movie twice in theaters, and that's only once in a while when that even happens, to be honest with all of you. But yeah, The Avengers, I actually saw it three times in theaters because my family and I just enjoyed it that much. Question number five. Did you see the Bob's Burgers movie? If so, did you like it? I actually caught the Bob's Burgers movie very recently. I actually saw it on my birthday. I ended my birthday by watching the movie. I watched it straight from Hulu. I did miss the movie in theaters. I wanted to see it in theaters because 2D animation is just so rare on the big screen. And unfortunately, time just got in my way so I didn't have the time to see it in theaters but I went ahead and just ended my birthday by finally watching on Hulu. It was in my honorable mentions and my anticipated for the summer season of 2022 but I didn't like it. I did write an entire review on my letterbox if you want to read it. I'll even leave the link to it in the description down below. I was honestly super super duper disappointed with the Bob's Burgers movie because I really enjoyed the show. The show did take time to grow on me because the pilot episode was garbage. Literally one of the worst pilot episodes I've ever seen to a show ever in my opinion. A show that did take time for me to like but it won me over regardless. And the movie is kind of the opposite of the show where it has little moments that could make me laugh even a little bit but man the humor was just not funny to me it was not landing most of the jokes were just trying way too hard in my opinion way way too hard um it was super boring i didn't like the villain in the movie i thought he was super annoying he got my grating nerves after a while it's just unfortunate because i do like the animation a lot the opening specifically, um, I've been listening to the opening musical number a lot on Spotify. That has stuck out to me more than the movie itself, unfortunately. But yeah, I expected so much more from the Bob's Burgers movie. I really liked the marketing. Um, it was just really exciting to get not only another 2D animated movie, but another like 2D animated movie that's based off of a popular show because you know it reminded me of something like when we got the simpsons movie which that that turned 15 years old recently that's insane for me to say that that's a 15 year old movie now but it's just like oh it's kind of cool to get something more the lines of like the simpsons movie where it's a popular where it's a movie based off of a popular animated series um but yeah I'm, i know a lot of people really like it love it even that's great that's wonderful i'm jealous of those people because i was just not in that same boat but yeah i did see the movie but i i did not like it it was okay but very lackluster to me question number six what shows on cartoon network did you grow up watching Oh, there is a lot. There's countless amount of shows. There's so many that I probably am not going to be able to name every single one of them, but it's like, you name it. Ed and Eddie, you know, we got Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. We got, you know, Camp Lazlo, uh, The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, of course, Courage, The Cowardly Dog, Cow and Chicken, Johnny Bravo, Hi Hi Puffy Amiyumi, uh, anyone remember that show? The Powerpuff Girls, Chowder, Flapjack, Samurai Jack, Samurai Jack, I can't forget that show, uh, Dexter's Laboratory, Code Lyoko, remember that show, 16, I remember that show too, of course, Total Drama Island, there's a lot, there's just so much um, that I grew up with when it came to Cartoon Network content. Man, just what a great, what a great childhood that was for that network. Those were definitely great times right there. Question number seven. 
What childhood movie scared you to death? Okay, so I wish I had a long list, but to be honest, um, I don't know why I said I wish. Why would I want to be traumatized on my mind? I don't know why I said that. But anyways, yeah, um, I don't have a long list because I was honestly too chicken to even watch any horror movies like my younger brother was definitely more into watching horror movies at his young age compared to me he would watch stuff like the grudge or the ring and stuff like that i refused to watch when i was a kid but there was definitely one movie i watched as a kid i didn't really expect it to scare me but this one movie truly did terrify me as a kid. And it actually gave me nightmares. Like I was crying. I was 11 years old. It is Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds. Yeah, that movie terrified me as a kid. I really did have nightmares when I watched that movie. Um, like I said, there's not a lot that traumatized me because I basically refused to watch a lot of the stuff that would traumatize me as a kid. But yeah, World of the Worlds, that's the only one from my childhood that really sticks out as, oh, that movie terrified me. Didn't see it in theaters, which is probably good. I, I just saw it at home. I remember, I think my parents rented the movie from Blockbuster from what my memory is gathering. We watched it and yeah. I was crying like a baby. But it's interesting because I actually did re-watch War of the Worlds a couple of years ago. It was actually my first time watching a movie since that night, you know, when I was traumatized as a kid. So 2020 was literally only my second time watching War of the Worlds. But yeah, I re-watched it and obviously now it's not a movie that like scares me so much that I'm gonna have nightmares. It definitely doesn't have that effect on me anymore. But it is a really suspenseful movie. It's a really well crafted movie. And what Steven Spielberg did with that movie, filmmaking wise in my opinion, was really done. It's just an overall good solid movie to me that I do really enjoy watching. But yeah, that's a movie that really terrified me as a kid. Question number eight. Did you like the My Little Pony from 2017. I'm assuming you're talking about the movie uh, My Little Pony. Now, for those that don't know, if you have followed me in my early years of this channel, I did talk about My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. So those of y'all that pretty much have known me since way back in my early years know that I'm a big fan of the show. Obviously, I haven't really discussed the show on this channel like at all in a long time. So if you're new to this channel, you probably don't know this, but I did really love My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. I still do think it's a wonderful show. So the show I am a really big fan of. I can't say the same for the movie though. It's kind of oddly similar to just what I said about the Bob's Burgers movie. The movies are based off of shows that I really enjoy, but the movies themselves I don't really enjoy. This one, I would say I actually like this one even less than even the Bob's Burgers movie, just by a little bit. I actually like it less than the Bob's Burgers movie. It was super, super boring. Didn't find the storyline interesting. They just don't really do anything interesting at all. I remember the humor falling flat, like big time. And even though I really, really love Pinkie Pie, like I'm telling you, like, like Pinkie Pie, probably like my absolute favorite character in the show, right? Her or Fluttershy. Pinkie Pie honestly got my grating nerves in the movie, which I never thought I would say. Because it's Pinkie Pie. She's charming. She's happy and all that. But, man, in the movie, I was surprised to say she actually got on my nerves with that one. It's a shame because, similar to Bob's Burgers movie, the animation is beautiful. It's stunning to look at. It was just such a mediocre, aggressively mediocre animated movie to me. Now, once again, if you like the movie, just like with the Bob's Burgers movie, that is amazing. I am envious because I wish I could be on that same boat, but man, I was bored to tears with the My Little Pony movie, so sadly, I did not enjoy it at all. Um, I wanted to, I really did, but it's just a very, very mediocre, just 
very boring, very uninteresting movie to me. Okay, everyone, this is where we're going to do a very interesting transition here because by the power of my tiger hands, see through the eyes of my magic, tiger hands. You ready? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, how do you like that, huh? Magic, magic. Not the power of editing or anything. This is actual magic that I can do. <laughs> Question number nine. What's your favorite cereal mascot? I have the perfect item to showcase the answer, actually. This guy. Tony the Tiger. Kind of obvious, uh, once again, because Tony the Tiger dude. Tigers are my favorite animals. And funny enough, in high school, I was called, you know, Tony the Tiger as a nickname. So it's just kind of funny that my favorite animals are tigers. My nickname happens to be Tony. And then, you know, Tony the Tiger, the mascot. So it's kind of funny how that kind of worked out, you know? And it's actually perfect that I have this guy just sitting next to me because this was actually a birthday gift I got recently from one of my cousins. So uh, awesome birthday gift right here, but yeah. Oh shoot, I love it so much. So yeah, uh, Tony the Tiger all the way. There. Question number 10, what is your all time favorite movie? I always have the same answer when it comes to me getting asked this kind of question, but too many. To be honest, I have a hard time looking for that number one favorite just because there's just so many movies out there but some of my all-time favorites I can definitely say is stuff like Singing in the Rain which is my favorite musical film The Shawshank Redemption I love Forrest Gump so so much Pulp Fiction Interstellar Ratatouille Goodwill Hunting Psycho the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 2001 A Space Odyssey, The Grand Budapest Hotel, 500 Days of Summer, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Jaws, E.T., The Extraterrestrial, but those are just some examples of some of my personal all-time favorite movies. Those are just the movies I really just absolutely love a lot. Question number 11. Do you have other favorite cartoons besides Spongebob? Absolutely, most definitely. There's a lot of cartoons I love besides for Spongebob Squarepants. I could definitely name off examples like Gravity Falls, which is my favorite Disney Channel cartoon. I love that show. There's also stuff like Regular Show. Love Regular Show so much. I also love Camp Laszlo, Hey Arnold, Avatar The Last Airbender, a more adult, very adult animated show, but a shout out to Bojack Horseman as well, which probably is my favorite adult animated show probably ever to be honest. I just love the writing and the characters with that show. Obviously you got stuff like Danny Phantom, The Fairly Odd Parents, except for the final season and of course um, don't even get me started on that live action show which yes unfortunately I did watch. Oh man, and I also have to give a shout out to Harvey Beaks, probably the most underappreciated show on Nickelodeon. It's honestly a crime that no one really talks about that show. Codename Kids Next Door, such a wonderful cartoon, and then of course Samurai Jack. And to give a final shout out, you know, I have to mention The Simpsons as well. The Simpsons is such a classic, classic animated show. And I know people have their thing about the new seasons, but I even personally enjoy watching the new seasons. It's not without its duds, of course, but I do still really enjoy the new seasons, to be honest. And that's not even all of the cartoons, of course, but those are definitely examples of cartoons that... I definitely really, really love watching besides for SpongeBob SquarePants. 
Question number 12. Do you wish to meet Tom Kenny, the voice of SpongeBob? Oh, most definitely. Without a shadow of a doubt, 100%, it would be a huge, huge honor to be able to meet Tom Kenny. I love that guy so much. He is just such a talented guy, very um, funny, and for what I've seen in interviews, just a very humble and chill guy. Um, being able to meet the voice of SpongeBob himself would be just so awesome. It's also a funny coincidence that I just also happen to share literally the same birthday as Tom Kenny. So that's kind of wild that SpongeBob is my favorite cartoon. And I also happen to share the, literally the exact same birthday as the voice actor of SpongeBob. But obviously, besides for just SpongeBob, he's just done numerous, numerous, numerous voice roles that are just really, really iconic. The guy is just truly. Uh, a master at voicing characters he pulls it off so well and yeah I just love the dude so yeah meeting him definitely a huge huge honor it would be so awesome question number 13 do you like the song 50 ways to say goodbye from train yeah I think that song is really catchy I love the beat I love the instruments um, it's just a song that I could just jam to whenever I listen to it on Spotify the radio whenever an opportunity comes in for that song to play uh, I could always just jam to it just a really catchy song do you like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yeah definitely the T the TMNT as I should say for sure yeah they were a massive part of my childhood I love watching them obviously they were characters that I have fond memories of watching when I was a kid obviously I love the turtles characters themselves uh, it's probably a cliche to say but obviously Michelangelo is just the best turtle in my opinion the cartoon had really great villains as well and I do want to give a quick shout honestly to Al the Shadows Al the Shadows I personally think that's a really under rated uh, TMNT movie and I enjoyed that one a lot and I do think it's too bad that we're not getting a third installment to that specific franchise. But we're gonna get the Seth Rogen animated film coming out as I'm recording this next year in 2023 and I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's gonna do with that one but yeah I do like the TMNT. I mean it's literally teenage turtles that go out there to kick butt, eat pizza, and play video games and yeah just goof around like normal teenagers would what's not to love about those turtles question number 15 an unpopular favorite least favorite entry of a movie franchise this is a really interesting question and i really really had to think about this question like big time i think i have my definitive answer for both i'm only gonna choose one for both the favorite and the least favorite category so when it comes to my unpopular favorite in a franchise it's actually for a trilogy that where I'm a fan of all three of them, keep this in mind. The Dark Knight Trilogy. I am a fan of all three of the films. Obviously, the most popular opinion for people is that The Dark Knight is the best in that trilogy, and it is, in most people's eyes, the best Batman movie. Now, where the unpopular opinion for that trilogy comes in, despite me being a fan of all three, is... My favorite in that trilogy is actually The Dark Knight Rises. I do love The Dark Knight, but there's just always something about The Dark Knight Rises that just screamed. Um, just my favorite, honestly, in that trilogy. It did used to be The Dark Knight, honestly, but as the years were going on, the more I was honestly watching The Dark Knight Rises, the more I was like, you know what? I think this is honestly my favorite in the trilogy and that's really not saying much because the trilogy as a whole is very consistent in my opinion but I just love what the Dark Knight Rises did as a conclusion for Bruce Wayne's arc it's definitely more of a Bruce Wayne movie than a Batman movie and I have no problem with that I love what Christopher Nolan did with that and aside from the anticlimactic Bane death and Tally Al Ghul's 
admittedly dumb death scene where she's just talking and then she does oh. those are like the only two minor things that honestly do kind of bug me about the dark knight rises as far as plot holes i i know people talk about that i don't really care i'm not one to really focus too much on plot holes in movies as long as i can really enjoy them and in the case of the dark knight rises i love that movie a lot i think it's truly one of the best conclusions to ever exist and it is still one of my favorite movies from the 2010s decade so that would be an unpopular favorite of a movie franchise now when it comes to an unpopular least favorite we got the indiana jones franchise right here and of course counting next year we will get our fifth and final one and obviously who knows how that's going to change a year from now but as of 2022 as i am recording this video Everyone says the least favorite, I shouldn't say everyone, most people say that their least favorite is Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Here's the interesting thing though. I have actually always enjoyed Crystal Skull. It is definitely flawed. It's not without its flawed moments. I could have done without, you know, the stupid CGI gophers. But I do think it's overall a fun, and satisfying Indiana Jones movie. I've always found it underrated. It's definitely something I can rewatch. My least favorite, which is very unpopular, is actually The Last Crusade. And it breaks my heart admitting this because I actually used to be a big, big fan of The Last Crusade. But I rewatched the entire Indiana Jones franchise back in 2020. Unfortunately, it is the third one because, yes, the stuff with Harrison Ford and Sean Connery, it's great, but that's literally all I remember from that third film. I don't even really think there's anything particularly memorable about Last Crusade besides for the very fun banter between those two to be honest with you because even the action which it's still well filmed it's not like it's poorly filmed or anything it's still well filmed but compared to Raiders of the Lost Ark which is my favorite in the franchise Temple of Doom and yes I know I would get crucified saying this Crystal Skull compared to those movies I didn't feel really as excited with the action. The tension was missing for some reason. The only action set piece in the third one that was somewhat exciting to me was the opening scene with River Phoenix. That was the only somewhat exciting action scene in the third one. But besides that, even though I can watch the action going well, it's well filmed. There's nothing really wrong with how it's edited either. I'm just not feeling that excitement. I don't think the storyline is really all that interesting. And the villain in the movie too is just super forgettable. So the only real true glue about that third film was just like Ford and Sean Connery. Their back and forth was really like the only thing to be able to help me get by what is overall just an okay serviceable third installment to me but yeah that's where the unpopular opinion comes in that is actually my least favorite in the indiana jones franchise question number 16 i am just wondering what's your favorite show you've seen this year in 2022 it's the proud family louder and prouder i have really enjoyed what disney has done with that revival i am amazed by the creative control they still let bruce w smith have because you know how it is with disney where you hear about them interfering with certain projects and you know all the typical hollywood stuff that goes on but bruce w smith seems to be like one of the rare creators at least where i've noticed working in disney that just seems to have full creative control because I rewatched The Proud Family 
leading up to Louder and Prouder. And when I rewatched The Proud Family, um, I felt Bruce W. Smith's full footprints all over with that one. And watching this revival, which I was really looking forward to, but my only worry was that, okay, is he going to still have that same creative control that he had with the original show? Or, as I would like to say, the first two seasons, because I do consider Louder and Prouder season three. And I was so relieved watching the show that, yeah, the full creative control that I felt with the original show was honestly still present with this revival. Yeah, the revival is really, really well done in my opinion. It really satisfied me as someone that grew up with the original show, really just adores the original show. And the original show is definitely still a show I could definitely say holds up for me. The characteristics never really changed. I'm impressed obviously with the new additions of the show, like with Kiki Palmer's character Maya, for example, and obviously how they handled the two dads too. That was a very ballsy episode for sure, but I definitely admired the boldness that the writers took with that episode, so kudos to them on that. You know, it's great to hear the voice actors back. The only voice performance that underwhelms me now these days is Wizard Cowley. I do miss that spark and it is the same voice actor too i just don't know if unfortunately it's a matter of age but like everyone else though i think is like truly spot on i don't think they've ever lost a beat and the flash animation i'm not too too crazy about but it's definitely not horrible and it's not distracting either and it's definitely something i just kind of you know kind of go get by with the more i watch the show because i'm so involved more with the characters and the storytelling and obviously there's a lot of great humor too but i'm also really impressed with overall character development with the revival and disney plus in my opinion personally has not had a strong year at all they they really have not had a strong year it's just been really mediocre content almost every time but the one shining bright spot i would probably say coming out of the year of disney plus shows is louder and prouder could not be more prouder eh? with how the show turned out in my opinion so that would be as i'm recording this video the best show of 2022 question number 17 what do you think about iCarly compared to the modern live action Dan Schneider shows like Henry Danger? So, I didn't watch enough of Henry Danger. I I have caught some episodes here and there, um, but I guess as far as how it compares to something like iCarly, um, uh, granted, obviously, the original iCarly since the revival on Paramount Plus is a thing now. Um, I guess it's about the same for me. You know, like I said, at least with iCarly, you know, back in the day, I have seen pretty much every episode from that show. With Henry Danger, I haven't. It's just some episodes here and there, but like... You know, iCarly uh, was always a show I was in the minority with. Um, I never thought it was, like, really that funny. But I guess that one, Henry Danger, are... I guess they're about the same. I don't know. I guess maybe iCarly can be more slightly, I guess, maybe better. Because you have at least highlights like Spencer, Gibby, you know, whatever. They exist. They're out there for people to enjoy. If you enjoy Henry Danger, that's awesome. If you enjoy iCarly, like I know many, many people do, that's awesome. But yeah, neither shows, uh, they don't really do it for me. I do want to mention very quick, though, that I do actually really like the revival in Paramount+. Plus. I figure just because I'm talking about iCarly, I might as well mention that I do like the revival much better than the original show. So there you go. Question number 18. Have you ever been wrong about a movie and one of the most anticipated lists you thought you would enjoy? And for part B of this question, and conversely, did the opposite ever happen with one of the least anticipated lists? 
Oh, absolutely. Really great question, by the way. Thank you. This is such a great question. The least anticipated is more on the shorter end of like my answers. So I'll get to the least one first. When it came to like the top five, there really wasn't like anything in particular that was like, wow, I really enjoyed that. Maybe the only exception would have to be the 2016 one with Ghostbusters. It was in my top five least anticipated, was not really looking forward to it uh, but I remember coming out of that movie enjoying it but for my dishonorable mentions there were a few there was girls trip which I thought looked like garbage from the marketing I was really dreading that movie but it had me laughing so hard. I saw that one at Elmo Draft House and I'll never forget how hard the audience was laughing with that film. Definitely I think one of the best theatrical experiences I've had with comedy films and like yeah I'd say the last five years now. Uh, the other one is Deadpool 2. I wasn't really looking forward to Deadpool 2 to be honest but it was a film that definitely really surprised me I wasn't even a fan of the first I think the first one is just very mediocre it's so bland it's not really that exciting of a movie in my opinion but the sequel I think it's very good I think it's definitely what I wanted the first one to be and of course um, there's Swiss Army Man Another film I was not looking forward to at all. It was in my dishonorable mentions for 2016, but definitely a film I came out loving a lot. So that's all I really got to say for least anticipated. Not really a lot of surprises when it came to those videos. Now for the most anticipated, you know, these are examples of films that I was like, really looking forward to and boy oh boy they disappointed me they really disappointed me for the ones I never really talked about on this channel I will talk about them so let's start off with welcome to Marwin that was my most anticipated movie for fall winter 2018 I love the marketing brilliant hated the movie it was heartbreaking how bad I thought Welcome to Mars was. It was honestly truly baffling to me. And I love Robert Zemeckis, so it broke my heart that not only did it disappoint me, but that it just left me so furious. That's definitely one of the most disappointing movies um, when it came to movies that I was like really looking forward to. And then, wow, it was just terrible 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 movie in my opinion the next one is from summer 2021 black widow did not like that one it's actually personally my least favorite mcu movie um uh i'll be honest when i say i was actually close to hating that movie and there's been mcu movies i definitely have not cared for but like this was the first time i was actually considering going um, a bad rating with Black Widow. And maybe there are days where I even think about kind of lowering the rain a bit. But I decided to say it's aggressive, and I do mean aggressively mediocre, because obviously Florence Pugh, she really does stand out in that film. There's a few interesting moments with the family drama that that was pretty well handled. But man, otherwise, everything else about that movie, it just has... Personally, for me, it has the sloppiest filmmaking in all of the MCU movies. Like, my goodness. And the third act was just terrible. Absolutely terrible. One of the worst MCU villains, too, in my opinion. Just completely wasted. That definitely really disappointed me. Going on to summer 2021, Space Jam A New Legacy was really hyped up for that one because of my nostalgia for the first because I am a sucker for the first one I still am but no the sequel was not it it was not it it was super boring outside of some of the Looney Tunes stuff 
I just was not really getting a lot of enjoyment. The basketball game, which I should be excited for, so long, such a drag, and a lot of the acting wasn't even really good. It, it, it could even be even quite poor, honestly. So yeah, very massively disappointed with that one. Another one from Fall Winter 2021, Dear Evan Hansen. I don't know if you all remember, but I thought the trailer was super emotional. I thought it was one of the most emotional trailers I've watched in some time. Uh, I just thought it was a movie that was going to just give me that emotional experience. And boy, oh boy, I mean, I guess it kind of did, but not for the reason that you're thinking. Yeah, wow, talk about a real massive letdown. And Ben Platt, who I thought, you know, despite the controversy with him being older, I thought maybe, okay, there's a chance he could pull it off. I watched the movie and no, uh, he didn't. Last Night in Soho. Edgar Wright's a very talented director. To be honest with you, he's very hit and miss with me. He is a very hit and miss director. And unfortunately, Last Night in Soho falls into the miss category for me. I thought it was super underwhelming. It's visually beautiful. It's definitely one of the most visually stunning movies of 2021. I'll definitely give it that. But like, man, the storyline just did not come together as, uh, I guess, as tight as I think it could have been. And that final act was just super underwhelming and honestly very muddled, in my opinion. My most anticipated of spring of 2022 is The Batman was really let down by that one. I wasn't very invested with that one. I couldn't even buy into Robert Pattinson's portrayal as Batman and that one. And it's a shame because Batman is my favorite DC superhero, but I didn't find myself so involved with it. It was just like, it has its interesting moments. I appreciate how different it is for the genre, but like, it did not click with me. The unbearable weight of massive talent. How was this disappointing? This could have been comedy gold, and I know most do, which is great, but for me, it really was not as funny as I thought it was gonna be. There were definitely some funny moments. I'll just say it, there's a joke involving Paddington 2. That was hilarious, that's all I'll say. But yeah, I was just surprised by how not very funny it was. We have The Greatest Showman, which I thought looked absolutely amazing from the trailers. Um, the music was great. It definitely delivered on that. I can't really say the same about the story, though. I thought the story was super underwhelming for that one. Um, you know, when I think about that movie, it's only because of the music, which I do admittedly listen to on Spotify. Isle of Dogs, really admire Wes Anderson, but... I was disappointed with that one, especially when you followed up with his last animated film, Fantastic Mr. Fox, which I do think is a really great movie. I thought it was going to be better. And then to cap off my final one, it's Nope, which was my most anticipated movie for summer of 2022. And I was personally very underwhelmed by the movie. I was super bored. I thought it was just all over the place. The narrative didn't really click with me. And as much as I would love to dig deeper into what everything meant in the movie, I don't really feel the need to do it because the movie wasn't executing a way where, oh man, this is so cool. I want to look into this and this. There's cool things. Uh, the reveal in the third act was cool too. Visually amazing what they do with that reveal, but yeah, the more I think about the movie, the more I'm just like, mm, man, yeah, just, man, I want to like that movie. I really did. Question number 19. Do you like the Bad Guys movie? What's your opinion on the new DreamWorks film, The Bad Guys? So, obviously, a couple of people asked me what I thought of The Bad Guys, which, uh, you know, I would have talked about my least anticipated, anticipated list question that I just answered right now. But, obviously, because I had this question, I was like, you know, I'll hold it until I answer this question. The Bad Guys, I was really hyped for it. I really liked the first trailer. The second trailer, admittedly, it's not really that good, but that first trailer was enough for me to get excited for the movie. I was very disappointed by it, to be honest. I didn't really care for it. I love the animation style of it. There's definitely certain things I admire 
uh, on a direction standpoint with that movie. I love the opening scene with that movie. The movie is really Ocean's Eleven meets Sly Cooper. I said this in my letterbox review. I definitely think it's the closest we'll get to a Sly Cooper movie until hopefully one day a Sly Cooper movie actually comes out. And by the way, I already tweeted about this with DreamWorks. If you could be the studio to do a Sly Cooper movie, please, please, because especially with the animation The Bad Guys, I think you could do it. Please, DreamWorks, consider doing a Sly Cooper movie. Please, please. But yeah, the story just wasn't as interesting as I think it could have been. Although I know the movie is aware it's predictable. I didn't think it was executed that well, to be honest. If you want to read more of my details on what I thought of Bad Guys, I'll leave a link to my letterbox review where I do write a little more of my thoughts in the film there. But yeah, sadly, I didn't really like the Bad Guys. Question number 20. What show would you like to cross over with SpongeBob? Great, great question. I actually would think it would be cool to get like a crossover movie between Spongebob and Scooby-Doo. You know, why not? I would actually love to see that. I don't know how Nickelodeon and Warner Brothers can make it work out, but like, you know, I'm still thinking about when we got Batman versus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The movie is really good, by the way. It's really awesome. I enjoy that one a lot, but you know, that was a collaborative Nickelodeon and Warner Brothers DC kind of movie. Obviously, Scooby-Doo is not DC, but you know what I mean. You know, Warner Brothers. It's a Warner Brothers property. So I actually wouldn't mind if Nickelodeon and Warner Brothers maybe worked out a deal to do like a SpongeBob and Scooby-Doo crossover movie. I think that would be super awesome. I would love to see that. I don't think it's going to happen, but... Man, if they could find a way, you know, take my money. I would love to see it. I would I would actually be genuinely interested to see both worlds collide. Loud House being basically as popular as SpongeBob now, to be honest, I wouldn't mind seeing a Loud House SpongeBob crossover. I feel like that could be an interesting little crossover right there. So yeah, I guess those are the two things that come to mind. And there's definitely other possibilities that I'm probably just not thinking right now because to be fair, it is 3.32 a.m. as I am answering this question. Question number 21. The question before the final question. Can't believe it. From a couple of people asking me what my best and worst episodes of SpongeBob are. And for this one, well, I think for my least favorite, those that have been around since pretty much the beginning of my channel, they know what the answer to that one is. Little Yellow Book, it's my least favorite SpongeBob episode. I would still say it still rings true to this day. And that video is actually my highest viewed video ever. It is my highest viewed video. And you know how it is with rants. You get a lot of views, but like it's just crazy to believe that a SpongeBob episode angered me to no end compared to some of the other bad Spongebob episodes that it actually gave me my highest viewed video ever on my channel that's kind of crazy to think about and obviously thank you to everyone that supported that video over the years thank you for enjoying my misery over that episode because wow that that episode really put a real misery into my brain so that is my least favorite but if I have to name off other least favorites um pets or pests is up there to be honest, uh, it, it, it's like really high up there. That is an abysmal, abysmal episode. If the show moving forward, you know, four and so on never existed, I would say I'm with Stupid actually would have been my least favorite Spider-Man episode of all time. And if we're going to talk just specifically seasons one through three, I would say I'm with Stupid is my least favorite episode from that era. Since I know the classic era, most people separate from the season four through so on era. For me, SpongeBob's always going to be one whole show. You know, I get it, the classic era, they were different times compared to right now, but it doesn't mean I'm going to look at the show any different. I'm just that loyal of a fan to where I look at the whole show as one special thing not just the classics but yeah i'm with stupid 
Uh, it's high up there. Ink lemonade. Holy crap. You know, the thing about the SpongeBob episode in the last few years is it is really rare to come by a truly, like, bad episode now these days. But holy crap. Ink Lemonade was one of the rare, like, truly rare bad episodes to come out in, like, the last five years. That was just what the hell, writers. And there's other stupid episodes, like To Love a Patty. Why was that? A, that, that why was that an episode? Still to this day, I question why an episode like To Love a Patty actually exists. And there's obviously numerous ones, but those are just the ones I can name specifically at the top of my head. Now, as far as like my favorites go, I know for sure my favorite classic one is the camping episode. And I actually did do a top 10 video from back a few years ago, if you're interested in watching that. But I actually did do a top 10, like the classic era of SpongeBob. And I put the camping episode up there, but my other favorites are obviously Chocolate with Nuts. I love that one. Snowball Effect is a classic. We got Shanghai. Karen's Virus. That's one of the best episodes, I think, in the newer era. I love that episode. And what they did with the animation in that episode is wild. A uh, Broken Alarm. I love love um that episode so much i think it's a really great one squid noir that's a really creative episode right there i really love that one a lot i love skill crane where's gary or have you seen the snail uh i love it's a sponge of christmas i love the halloween one and obviously the episodes i listed that's definitely not even half of it there is way more obviously but those are definitely some examples right there for sure all right everyone we're here for the final question here for this 22 question q a so question number 22 what is your moment you did on your channel these past 10 years okay so i guess it's what's your favorite moment you've done on your channel these past 10 years um Obviously, there's a lot of special things on my channel that I value. Obviously, I value all the YouTubers I've gotten to collab with in the past decade. You know, the times that I used to do Christmas reviews and Halloween reviews to get pumped up for the season. Those were definitely special times. Of course, I gotta bring up me creating Valentine's Day King very special to me and I do need to do a fourth one eventually. Making those first three are really special and Santa and Penguin as well. I don't know if anyone remembers those characters from the earlier days of my channel, but I love doing those characters too. But I know, truthfully, my most iconic character is Valentine's Day King. And you know what? I am honored to be known as like that specific character that I created in the earlier days on my channel. If you all haven't seen those little I guess short films you could say. They're not in the greatest quality admittedly, but obviously it's always fun to look back fondly on the memories of making those. There is a playlist, so if you want to watch Valentine's Day King, you could go in the description down below. I'll be sure to leave all that there. Some of the stuff I've done, like the DVD updates, obviously the movie intros, you know, the intros I would do for my movie reviews. Um, you know, I do sometimes rewatch some of my movie reviews to see some of the intros I did, and not for nothing, but I do love some of the intros I've done for my movies like inside out the one i've done for straight out of compton i think that's one of my best intros uh it took a lot of work for sure but when i rewatched that intro it was definitely worth it in my opinion um lots of intros i've done for my movie reviews in the past i'm just super proud of and i always have fond memories of those thank you all for sending me in these questions. That is my 22 question Q&A to celebrate my 10th anniversary. Thank you all once again for just helping me reach this point. It's just truly incredible to be in this place in my life. And I wanna thank you all for just being the best supporters that 
anyone could seriously ever ask for. I'm truly grateful. And as far as the rest of the questions that I didn't get to answer in this video, I promise I will do like a bonus Q&A to answer those leftover questions for you all. Thank you all so much for watching. You are all so awesome. This is 22 Tiger Dude going 10 years strong bringing the 22 and 2022 and don't forget as always with your amazing support that i will always have tiger power